What's going on guys, I'm Jody. This is Inspire Woodcraft. Today we're going to make splined miters on the table saw and the best part is we're gonna do it without even building a jig. All we're gonna need is a pencil and a combination square to do this or a square that has some sort of a 45 degree reference on it. Now I wanna bring everybody up to speed on what it is that I'm actually trying to do here today. What I have is a miter joint. I have two 45s. I'm gonna glue these together to make a 90. This would be like a picture frame. This would be like a box. Or if I was to turn it this way and I had a top with grain running this way and then wrapping down, this would be a waterfall effect. That would be still a miter joint. Now miter joints are great. The problem is they're not inherently strong with just glues. We need a way to reinforce this. And one really popular, fairly easy option is to put a spline in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a groove right here on the corner of my project. I'm gonna make a spline the same thickness as this groove. We'll glue this up, we'll slide it in here, we'll trim off the ends, and when I'm done, I have a very attractive spline here that's reinforcing this corner quite substantially. Now you can use your spline material as a decorative feature in the box or the frame that you're making by using contrasting wood species. So here I have a birch plywood box with a walnut spline. I can also hide that spline a little bit easier by using the same material or the same wood species as my project and that'll sort of hide that spline just a little bit better. Now traditionally we would make a jig for said operation, something that rides against the fence or something that rides in on the table itself. And you would run this past this whole project through the blade this way. Your project would sort of sit in here like this. But today, we're not gonna do that. Today, we're gonna do all of this just by laying one mark on here and then we'll get our blade set up here. So I'm gonna do this two different ways because there might be a reason that you need to do it one way or another. It's good to have options. To do this on the box itself that I'm using for my example, I'm just gonna take my spline piece, I'm gonna put it in my square and just slide it right up here until I hit the head of my square. And then I'm gonna slide the whole operation back until I get to my miter, just like this. Now I can simply draw a line. Now, if you don't have the space to work, like you're dealing with a complicated frame or something, then what you can do is set your piece up against like the table saw fence or something, and you can just draw a line here and draw a line here. That's gonna give you an exact representation of the project that you're actually working on. Now you have a little bit more room to work. We can do the same thing. I'm gonna take my spline, hold it right up here to the corner this time. Make sure that I'm locked in here at 45. Draw my line. Where that line landed is the same as where that line landed. This is just a different way of laying out and setting myself up in case I have a delicate project. Now I'm ready to take this to the blade and set my blade up. So I'm gonna use my actual workpiece for this example. And I have my workpiece and my fence brought all the way up so that I'm just barely squeaking past my blade right here. And what I wanna do is take note on where my blade tooth is coming in and leaving. So as you can tell right now, if I was to cut this right here, I would be cutting in here and out here. I want an equal distance from the corner of my box to this side and from the corner to this side. So obviously that's not gonna work. All I need to do then is raise my blade up. I'll bring this back until it starts to look about right. And I'll take note again on where my blade is coming in and out of my cut. So right here, I would be hitting the bottom, the back side of that, which is what I want. But my tooth is coming in here and it's exiting right here. That's really, really close but I think we can get it a little bit better if we just simply raise our blade up a little bit more. Scoot this back. We're cutting in right to the bottom where we want. And now our blade's hitting here. Finicky little guy. And it's leaving right there. And that's really close. So that's gonna get us equal distance apart like we wanted to. Now, without moving the location of this, I'm just going to put some pressure on it so that I don't bump it out of my way. I'm simply going to put some tape right here on the edge of my fence. See if I can try and get it somewhat straight here. And that now gives me a reference for where to stop. So all I have to do is push this in, make the cut until I get to my tape, 
and then pull it back out. Now, if you were doing one or two things, you might be comfortable with that, but you also might be worried that over time you're gonna start gumming up that tape and moving it. That's where you would just take a thin strip, some spline material would work perfect, put some double side tape on the other side. We can take a block that has a square edge to it, bring it right up to our tape, and just fasten this, stick it right to the side of our fence here, and now we have a stop block. What I don't want, is I don't want it hitting the deck itself because then it's gonna trip over all these little bumps and valleys here. So I wanna have this so that it's free moving. So now I'm ready to make my cut. All I have to do is figure out where I want that spline to be. I think right here looks pretty good. What I would do if this was a full box is cut all four corners on this side of the box. Then I would turn the box 180 degrees around and cut all four corners on the other side so that my splines are equal distance from the top and bottom of my box. So now I have two perfect notches cut equal distance all the way around, both from here to the corner and here to the corner, and from this edge to here on both sides. And my spline material will simply fit in there. With a little bit of glue, like I said, let it dry, we'll cut those off, and now we have a spline miter. So that's it, quick and easy spline miters on the table saw, and what I really like about this is that we don't have to make a jig to do it, which means that literally anybody with the table saw can pull this off. Now I know you guys are probably gonna ask about the splines and making the splines, I will leave links for that. I'm also gonna leave links in the description for my recommendations on flat grind saw blades and that'll give us a nice clean hole here when we cut our grooves or our notches in the corners of our projects. Try this out, let me know how it goes. That's all I got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching as always, we'll see you in the next video.